Shalom. Kahalaimla. Yahweh. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Being born again. <coughs> so I'm going to briefly go into this. Being born again. And quite often. We wake up to this truth. And we're trying to. Incorporate. Doctrines of the world. Into this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And trying to create. A mixed solid effect. Which does not work. Because the Bible is not made to be warded down, diluted, polluted, intermingled with the different philosophical belief systems of the world. A melting pot, so to speak. The Bible is pure in its own original state. And every time I say that, I think of the movie American Gangster where the one of the gangsters tried to dilute or water down the blue magic drug and then still call it blue magic, but it lost its value because he added other foreign substances to it in order to stretch his profit. <coughs> so let's go here. Psalms 12. Let's go to verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt keep, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So the doctrine is not made to be mixed or watered down. Let's get one more. <coughs> Let's go to Isaiah 34. The book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. None shall want her mate. So not comedic faith, not Buddhism, Hinduism, not Christianity. So it's a pure doctrine in its raw state, like raw honey. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. So every prophet has a lot and a measure of faith coupled with understanding, divided by line and lot. Let's go here. So it's fruitless or vanity to come into the doctrine and not be able to receive the full doctrine or try to add a man-made philosophy. Then that is violating the purity or virginity of this doctrinal wisdom. So the elect men are not defiled or are virgins because of maintaining integrity 
through the spirit. So the remnant is preserved through integrity of the scriptures and not becoming polluted or defiled by the doctrines of this world. So they are virgins. <clears throat> Let's go here to Luke 14. The book of Luke chapter 14. Let's go to verse 26. <clears throat> if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So we're raised by our mother and father. We are to honor our mother and father. But what happens if we're not being raised up in the doctrine of this Bible? Then the priority is what the word says. Most of us were raised up in the Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or ancient African comedic faith. Guess what? We must divorce ourselves from these different ideologies. So the priority is on the pure doctrinal wisdom from on high. That's our first love, Sophia, which is wisdom. Let's read this again. So we are to honor our mother and father through the doctrinal truth. Luke 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So sacrificing the worldly values that we had restructuring our value system based on the Bible. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So this is not a, spec a spectator's sport. Sitting on the sideline and, and criticizing or throwing darts at what we don't like about the doctrine or mocking and scoffing those that are putting their best foot forward and making their bodies a living sacrifice. This is a hands-on occupation. Occupy till I come, is what Yahushai said. That means take action. So faith without works is dead. So that bearing that cross comes with adversity, trial, and tribulation, the tests of our faith. Let's read it again. Luke 14, verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. And that comes to knowing that our lives are on the line for this truth, for truth's sake. So going until the work is done, until the return of the Hamashiach, the Messiah, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, falling out of the truth, and then becoming a laughing stock and frowned upon 
as a hypocrite. Luke 14, verse 30, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. So weighing the cost of what it takes to be, to be in the truth, being demonized by government, ostracized by society, hated by mother or father or sister or brother. So the scriptures tied together might have family members that reject the doctrine. So now we become, let's go here, to prove the point. Isaiah 29, let's go to verse 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. The oppressors are going to be brought to nothing. Verse 21, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. So standing up for righteousness' sake makes us a prey. First, the approach is to discredit the truth. Then, try to dismiss it then try to demonize it, and then lastly, try to come with targeting or death. Destruction, that's the fourth D. So dismiss, discredit, demonize, destroy. Those are the phases of the truth com coming under scrutiny or attack. Let's keep it moving. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line is to be renewed through a spiritual birth. Let's go to Acts 3, verse 19. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So this is a spiritual baptism, a renewal of consciousness. Let's go into this word. Be converted. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 1994, Epistrepho. Epistrepho. To turn about to the worship of the true power, to love and be obedient to the Most High, to love wisdom and righteousness. Well, this gets into a becoming a new creature. Let's go to the word repent. Repent comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 3340, Metanaeo. Metanaeo. To change one's mind. So a renewal of a mindset, a rebirth based on a spiritual baptism and being baptized by the word. So this truth should make us become a new man, a new creature, and abandon the old ways, smoking weed, committing adultery, worshiping other gods, so forth and so on. 
hating our brothers that are in the truth and sisters. Psalms 51. The book of Psalms, chapter 51. See, it's right here. Psalms 51, verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A new mind or a renewed mindset. Verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And the sins of Jacob or the Israelites shall be changed, starting with a new way of thinking and abandoning the old ways, the old path, and the old man. So that old man has to die. Envy, strife, hatred, idolatry, covetousness. Let's go to Matthew 18, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Yahawashai, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahawashai called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So a small child is, sub, is learning under all subjection. A child learns under all subjection. Not being combative, fighting every aspect of the doctrine. Receiving it. So it's, a, it's taken on a feminine principle to be open up to receive the seed of truth, which is the word, pursuant to Luke 8 and 11. So that's taken on a submissive, a submissive mindset, submitting ourselves unto Yahweh Shai, just as Yahweh Shai submitted himself to the church, which is the congregation of the elect of Israel. See? Just like our wives are commanded to submit unto us. <coughs> That's why the Bible says a, a, a mind well instructed is a blessing unto a man. His wife being a mind well instructed. Let's read this again. So a child learns and listens with all subjection. Matthew 18. What else? The child is a virgin in theory. That child is not polluted with the other penetrable doctrines and philosophies and the mindset of the world. They're innocent. Matthew 18, verse 3, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we must be born again, which starts with being baptized by the word, a spiritual cleansing. <clears throat> Let's go to Psalms 131. The book of Psalms, chapter 131. Look at the title. A childlike trust in the Lord. Psalms 131, 
a song of degrees of David. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. We must know our place. Not trying to be a damn neuroscientist when all we've done is study a barbecue pork menu. And I'm being facetious, but knowing our place in this truth. Psalms 131 verse 2. Surely, surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother, my soul even as a weaned child. A gradual step-by-step -step instruction process. So it takes time to mature, to grow, and to become seasoned over time. Psalms 131 verse 2. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Being born through the womb of a spiritual placenta, a baptism. So this is being renewed through the spirit. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. So being coming, becoming like a child again. Being born again. Let's go to John 3. And we'll get ready to close out. John 3. Let's go to verse 4. <clears throat> Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahweh shall answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Yahweh shall drink some water. <clears throat> Voice is dry. John 3 and 5. Yahweh Shai answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the word creates a metaphysiological change. We begin to think different, view the world different. We tone it down. We humble down. We lose the spirit of envy and wrath, malice, murder, backbiting, gainsaying. This is an entire makeover, which starts in our human conscience. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So the word changes us from the inside out. What sense does it make to spend $1,000 a year on makeup and be sour and rotten to the core? On the inside. That's ridiculous. Marvel not. That I said unto thee. Ye must be born again. Let's close out here. <clears throat> verse Peter 1. Verse 20. Who verily. Was foreordained. Before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you. That's Yahweh Shai, who by him do believe in God, 
that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing he hath purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren and that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So being born again brings us closer to one another as a house of the Lord, the house of Dawada. This is a Davidic bloodline that is being joined back together through the spirit of truth, temperate mortar, one doctrine, one spirit, one faith, one name. So we can't hate one another if we're building alongside each other and are subject to one another. Anybody outside of that building is not in the truth. There is no in-between with the most high. We're either building or tearing down. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of corruptible. 1 Peter 1 and 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So this starts the metaphysiological change because the spirit lives on and cannot be destroyed. So this is the precursor or the pre-step, the first step towards receiving the new bodies, the new garments, the new, the change. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. But it starts with a renewed mindset. <clears throat> being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So the incorruptible must put on in corruption. Our brain is being washed, cleansed, restored. Our perspectives, perspectives are being reshaped and redefine our moral compass is being calibrated see first corinthians 15 verse 52 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. That starts with what? Faith in the fourth dimension, the third heaven, what we can't see. Faith in the Hamashiach, the Messiah that was raised from the dead. So without the mental conversion, it's not going to manifest in the flesh. The spiritual decree must be sealed first. 
for this incorruptible, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. No more death, no more pain and sickness, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more hair falling out, no, no more rotten teeth, missing teeth, arthritis, no more being deceived, an entire mental, spiritual, and physical makeover. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Shalom.